Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you do reach these videos, it means you've completed component one, which is uh, fantastic, so well done. I hope that your teacher, uh, if it's not me, has already given you, you your grade or your mark for that section. That also means that you've, you're have halfway through the coursework element of this course, this B course, sorry, this uh, BTEC uh, Digital Information Technology course. As you know, if you remember, there are six pieces of coursework two components, both of them have three learning games. So we're now about to start component two. Now there will be some similarities and then obviously some big differences as well. And before we go into the different sections in this video, as before, we're going to understand the brief itself. Um, and I want to remind you here before we carry on, uh, carry on any further, that this is just the mock. So we're going to focus on the learning aim A, mock for component two. And the whole purpose of these marks is to give you the tools, the skills and the experiences that you need to successfully complete the real learning game A for component 2 in the assessment, authorised assessment brief. So before going any further, let's read through this and, uh, and try to understand the, the scenario and the theme and the topic of this component. So, so far you can see here, it doesn't look any different from what you've looked at so far. This should be looking uh, pretty familiar to you. You have all these tables here, outline the qualification, the component number, as you can see, is component two. And it's all about collecting, presenting, and interpreting data. Now we're going to look at what this word actually means uh, later on. This is learning game A, as I said. There's three more, three in total, total. So the learning game A, then B, then C. No different from component one. This assignment title is called Data Collection and Analysis. I also want to remind you that this situation will be different from the real thing. Similar to how you will have conducted the mock in the previous compo component, the, the real thing will look similar but not the same. So you cannot go into this component thinking, all right, I'm just going to memorize everything and I'll do exactly the same thing in the real thing and I'll be fine. It won't work because it'll be a different uh, context, different background, different storyline. The scenario will be different. Therefore, you're working with different kinds of data and information. So it really, really is important that you understand and internalize the knowledge, the understanding of the the the, the coursework itself, this this component itself, component itself. It should you want to succeed uh, and uh, get those higher grades. So let's get uh, started. Without any further ado, let's read the uh, the scenario starting from here. So many organizations collect data to help them improve their products and or services. Data can be, can be collected uh, in a variety of ways. In this scenario, there are two sets of data collected in different ways by two different companies. So this is already telling you you're going to be working with two sets of data from two different companies. The first set of data has been collected by Draws and Academy. Remember, this is just a mock, not the real thing. So in this mock, you're going to be looking at Draws and Academy catering services. It has been, it has been collected uh, automatically by the computer system used at the till during every break, break and lunch service. The data is about students and staff who have purchased food from the canteen over a limited period of time. They estimate about 90% of staff and students who attend the academy purchase food from them. The data in the uh, is in the file called Drolton Academy Data CSV. Now if you're in my lessons, if I'm teaching you in, my, you, you in front of me, I'll show you where this is in the shared area. Um, if you are working on this from home uh, using my YouTube uh, uh, channel, I will um, try my best to incorporate these into the link in the comments uh, underneath the actual video itself. Hopefully, um, it just makes sense to put in the same Google Drive uh, account that I had for Component 1. So if you go in there, hopefully you'll be able to find not only these files, but also this mock as well, should you want to use these. Now this is telling you what the data will contain in this actual file, in this CSV uh, file. So we're going to have ID number, the date, time, the amount that was spent, the gender of the person and how many, how many minutes it took to, to, to process, so how long it took to serve them. So that's the first set. Yeah, just the food that's been served to the people eating at break or lunch time in this school, Yeah, which happens to be our school, my school. The second set of data is for Cineworld, which is a cinema. A cinema. Um, now, these names shouldn't really make a difference. Um, it's not really important that you know the background of the companies. That's not the point here. It's the data itself. So just we need to understand what kind of 
organization they are, what kind of organization they are to understand what kind of data they'll be working with to help, hopefully, help you make better use of it as well. So the, the data has been collected from different sources, the cinema, sorry, the cinemas, let me just fix this, uh, booking system uh, database and a specialist survey company who contacted the customers via an email survey. The company has calculated about 50% of the customers who were contacted responded to the survey. The data for this scenario, the cinema, is called Cineworld Data XLSX. Uh, this, might, this part here may not show the actual uh, file format. Uh, that shouldn't matter. It depends on what computer you're using. That's all you're looking for. Again, I'll put it in the shared area and or the Google Drive shared folder online. Now in this document, uh, spreadsheet file, which we'll talk about soon, you can, as you can see, there's quite a lot more detail. There's a lot more data that we have to deal with. So we're going to have their email, a customer's email, the date this, they completed the survey, the gender of the person, the name of the movie they went to watch, the date they went to actually go and watch that movie, how long that movie was in minutes, the genre of the movie, was it a comedy, was it action, was it romantic, was it comedy, was it romantic comedy, uh, was it a horror, the rating they gave to, uh, to they gave as a customer for that film, uh, the booking process rating, so how long, uh, what um, rating the customer gave to the process of booking those tickets, what rating they gave to the cinema, and whether they would recommend it to a friend, and of course how much they paid. All these scales um, from here, the ratings, will be between 1 and 10. 1 being the lowest, sorry, 1 being, yeah, 1 being the lowest and 10 being the highest. So in this task, uh, before I close this video, end this video, sorry, um, and move on to talking about the different sections. As you, as, as you scroll down, you'll see that there are different sections, just like in the previous uh, components, uh, previous component and learning game A, B, and C. It's, um, let's look at the task itself. So in this task, you should first study the data files so that you are familiar with the data that has been collected. You should explore these following items. The characteristics of data information, the data collection methods and features used, the quality of the data collection collected by each company and how this impacts on the decision making and the reliability, reliability of the data and how the data might be used for the company to make decisions. You should then provide a comprehensive detailed assessment of how the data was collected by the companies, the features of the collection method uh, used, how reliable the method of collection that were used, the factors that might affect the quality of the data, suggest how the data might be, uh, might be of use to the company and suggest ways that the data collection might be um, improved. And of course, how the collection of data might affect the privacy of customers. So there's quite a lot to go through. At the moment, this probably doesn't make much sense to you. So what I'm going to do is before I start uh, looking at the next section, the first section of actual uh, work and typing, let's actually go through what they're asking here. The good news is this, you are going to be provided the data, the raw data. So you don't have to do any kind of surveys, you don't have to do any, any kind of interviews, you don't have to go and find this information, it's been provided to you. You have to basically make heads and, ta heads and tails of, of it, you have to basically um, understand it, make it um, usable and relevant to the scenario. So. In the first situation, you can see it's a school. In the second situation, you can see it's a cinema. The two different types of organisations, and they'll have different different needs for them. So the good news is that you're going to get that data. The bad news is that you have to basically make sense of it, and there's a lot of formatting that you're going to have to do. So what I thought would be useful is if I showed you what we're talking about here, and the key word for this component is the word dashboard. Now what I've done is luckily I found a website. And you're more than welcome to pause the video here and go to this website yourself. It's called thesmallman.com. And they basically have some excellent examples of what dashboards look like. Now, you can't use these. By that, I mean, they can't, you can't exactly download them and then hand them in and as if they're your, your, your own work. Um, because in the real thing, it'll be a different scenario altogether. But I thought it'd be useful to at least look at these to understand what a dashboard is, uh, what they look like, and where they are coming from. By that I mean the data itself. How does the data link to a dashboard? So as you can see here, I've got some examples already uh, set up here on the, on the top, here on the tabs. I've, I've downloaded them as well, so I'm going to show you what they look like. 
And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll understand what it is that you, you have to physically make because there is a product that you have to create. It's no different from the previous component. So in the previous component, you had to make something, but there was research involved beforehand. You had to explain, you had to go through all that background, get that knowledge, understand um, what it is the product is about before you can go away and make it, plan it and make it. So no different here. So let's have a little, a little read through here. The Excel dashboard section of a small man uh, sorry, of the small man has lots of Excel dashboard templates for you to download and use with your own idea. For, with your own idea, sorry, with your own data. Sorry, the go the goal of the site is to create a visual hub for ex Excel um, dashboard design with a range of different dashboards from financial to organizational. With a range of different dashboards from financial to organizational. Uh, sorry, I've, re I've obviously repeated myself there. Let me say it again. The goal of the site is to create a visual hub for Excel dashboard design with a range of different dashboards from financial to organizational and KPI dashboards. The first part of the article deals with the theory of Excel dashboard design with some uh, pictorial examples of Excel dashboards uh, that they have created for CPA Australia. Next there are links to pages in the site on the site with a range of Excel dashboard examples templates for you to take away. An Excel dashboard and here's where the the, the main point is a dashboard is a one-page summary that contains important information which allows you to analyze your subject okay to put simply you're gonna get information and let me show you an example let me show you this one here from the same website you're gonna get raw data like this so at the moment you can see this is just a list of information they look like lists yeah schools AMS Massa PHX, if I go to the next tab, you'll see a range of data here by itself makes no sense. A lot of people will probably just, you know, look, they look at this, it'll go over their heads. So you're going to get data very similar to this. And the first job for you will be to make it into tables, organize it and make sure that the data is the correct format and is organized well. It's easy on the eyes and it makes sense. After that, you have to make the data into information. Now, we're going to talk about what the difference between those two is soon, but what you'll see is here, if you look at this, guys, the question is this. If someone handed this over to you, most of you will say, what am I supposed to do with this? How is this useful? Like, if you were working for the school, how would you use this? Well, this is why dashboards are important. Now, you can see here, this one's been done already. I mean, look at this table here. You know, a lot of us would you know, would not be able to understand this. Even myself, if I had to look at the, understand this, I'd have to spend some time, read through this, look at the top, uh, the labels themselves, and figure out what this is actually about. Alternatively, the correct person who created this could create a dashboard, which is basically a one-page summary. Let's have a look at this one. And here we go. Now, from here, you can see what's happened is it's basically a summary of all the information, patterns, trends, things that are important that have been extrapolated, basically been taken away from these tables into this dashboard. So this is a summary page using visuals to explain the key patterns and trends, things that will be important to understand. So we can see here, um, this is FY split instructional and admin. So you can see uh, how many is instructional, how much is admin. You can see the salary types here split up. Um, you can see monthly split uh, between instruct instructional and admin here. With the uh, keys underneath here, you can see which one's instructional, which one is admin. Now, obviously, this still may not make sense to most of us because we don't work at the school so we don't know what we mean by instructional or admin hopefully you know when you get to do the mark and therefore and then the real thing the authorized ass assessment brief the information will be a little bit more easier to understand and deal with than this the other thing is you can see that that the summary page should change depending on what you select so you can see when i click on these buttons here at the top left hand side the summaries here change. Let's open another one. Let's look at this one here. This one, I, I quite like this one here. It's about basically the heat um, temperature, uh, basically heat map of, sorry, a, a heat map analysis uh, of England by region. Now you can see here, again, it's a breakdown. The colors make it easier. At the moment here, you can see this is population. If I click on income, 
then it changes the map. There we go. The key here tells us or helps us understand what we mean by these colours. And the information on these charts also change. If I change this again to unemployment, then again these change. But again, you can see this is basically unemployment rates, yeah, by region. So in the north northeast, this is what it is. In London, this is what it is. In Yorkshire, Northwest, West Midlands, and so on and so forth. You can see a breakdown of the ages, 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 30, 30 to 59, 60 to 74, and so on and so forth. You can see annual spendage, spendage here, uh, weekly spendage. So it breaks it down. This makes more sense than if someone gave me this or these tables here. So to put simply, guys, let's have a look at another one. You are going to be given data similar to this here. First job is going to make it look nice and organized by making it into table, into a table or tables. And then the main job will to make a summary sheet, a dashboard like this, where you're using bar charts, line charts, pie charts, and other types of tables to make it easier for the user to understand the key patterns. Okay? So, I hope that makes a little bit more sense. Sorry, let me get this back up. As I said, you're working with two different companies. We'll look at the first section in the next video.